Today, I grace you with my understanding of Happy Feet. I'm trying to get back into the groove of my channel, but the editing, while stable again, still needed an upgrade to begin with. So I might intersperse these live-action shots of my creepy outfit like last time, you know, instead of sloppily zooming in on my profile picture whenever things get dramatic. I've kept my eye on Happy Feet since the day I started all this, and I can finally give you the deets. Not even sure if it's a theory at this point, you're about to see just how accurate I'm getting here, but I believe this movie is about the second coming of the one and only Jesus Christ, and also supernatural aliens. What else is new? Hello. I'm the Theorizer. This video is structured as a descent, a descent into my ever-present madness. I am calmer, we've discussed this in both the recent Rock Bottom and Oompa Loompa theories, but this one might push me back to the brink. Wonderful. As this video is in fact going to go increasingly off the rails, I should note that it will end abruptly and shockingly as ever. So let's get the end stuff out of the way right now. Who sponsors this video? Nobody. Well, that's not entirely true. My patrons. Things are heating up over on Patreon. All the people over there saw this video fully in advance without ads in it, and they're also getting shoutouts in the end of this video, and they've been conversing with me in Discord for weeks now, as things get more and more popular over there too. I'm also also creating an ARG video game for all of you, and they'll be the beta testers. It's all very juicy, all very important, and I can't tell you how much it means to me personally, considering I can only now make this video with the new laptop you helped me buy. Also, I'm recording very late, I might be quiet. The film Happy Feet is the Bible. Shit, I guess I should explain myself. So to get to the bottom of the mysteries, tell me, what is the result of these films? The answer is simple humans stop taking over. In the first film, the penguins almost die off because they have no food. This is treated as an apocalyptic situation, and it's all because the humans are harvesting fish en masse. There could also be possible subtext about worldwide climate issues causing the cave-in in the second film, but that movie's doing its own thing, so let's try and keep it to the message of film one. The world was dying. The penguins were dying, the food chain was whacked, and the world was in chaos. We see as much as the world's nations argue with each other. This movie is aiming high for its messages of pain and suffering, and good god we're about to see why. The plot for this movie is seemingly simple. Happy Feet over here uses the powers of song, dance, and love to communicate with the humans that they need more empathy, thereby saving the world in more ways than one. The humans hear the penguins for what they are. Annoying, squawking, flightless, monochromatic rats. Ugh. Pardon my indifference. They hear the truth. Hideous squeals a la mumble. There ain't no beautiful singing going on as far as they're concerned, so mumble. Someone who can convince them visually and beyond a shadow of a doubt saved their world by showing them the plea ritual of the century, a massive dance that tracks them back to the starving populace of Emperor Land. Happy Feet's ability to dance, and solely his ability to dance, spreads to the other penguins and literally saves all of their lives. This is the main point of the movie. Beautifully simplistic love, apparently. So I asked the question that all the humans in this movie were probably asking, how and why the hell can Mumble dance? We witness something remarkable near the beginning of the film. Gloria, Mumble's love interest, walks up to his egg. It refuses to hatch. She pecks at it with a neat little rhythm, and he starts moving. He slips and falls around, and his first contact with the world is in the form of chaotic legs trying to find footing. Her pecking beat, as far as I'm concerned, screwed with his delayed awakening. Mumble's father, Memphis, always fears that him dropping the egg was responsible for his son's singing problem, and while that factor has its place, I really think it was Gloria here. She was compelled to come up and peck it, and it changed Mumble. Know why? This film's codebreaker is simply put, love. It's the core message and the driving force. His soulmate interacting with him before hatching provides him with the rhythmic love tools he needs. But this is absurd, right? Well, like I said before, Memphis dropping the egg has its place, and this is where things get good. I think him dropping the egg resulted in the delayed birth, requiring the egg to be unlocked by his soulmate. Don't believe me? I'm just getting warmed up. Let's examine the egg dropping scene closer. All of the penguins are braving the harshest winter, the increasingly harsh climate of the South Pole. That may or may not be caused by the humans mucking with the ozone or whatever, but they all manage to survive it by singing and visualizing the Great Gwyn. 
This mythical figure is the one that all the penguins worship. The elders form their government around the religion dedicated to this spiritual being, and it's a central point of the movie. They all sing in unison, but Memphis sees a vision of his wife, who he loves more than any other man loves their wife. He can't handle it, and by breaking from the group in the name of love, his egg slips and rolls down a hill. He saves it, but the damage is evidently done, as Happy Feet takes much longer to hatch than the rest. His soulmate has to unlock him, and arguably, this also led to his dancing deformity. Nobody seems to realize it was the Great Gwyn who did this to Memphis. The Great Gwyn made him distracted in the name of love. Why? Well, it resulted in the salvation of their planet. But don't get ahead of me quite yet, because it goes even deeper. Why did Memphis love Norma Jean in the first place? Well, their heart songs were compatible. They were seen as the best male singer and the best female singer in their whole society, and they met by singing in unison amidst the bright, intimate sunlight. Song is love, as they narrate. Rhythm drives them together faster. This is how and why they were granted the power of song, the Great Gwyn. This is also how they have access to pop music and modern human concepts. Their god is real. We see it. Everything was in place for Mumble's birth because all of the elder penguins prayed for it. They prayed for a fish solution, and it happened. It happened again with Mumble's little son, Eric, who can only sing opera and save them in the sequel. So yes, the question finally solves too. Why did the Great Gwyn take a special interest in creating and maintaining Penguins of all things. Well, I believe it's a perfectly honed situation. A bunch of flightless birds isolated at the bottom of the world who cannot speak, forcing love to prevail as their method of communication, uniting the world over a continent that has no country. Antarctica is alien to us, we are alien to them. The Great Gwyn is quite literally an alien god. Calm down, I'm not reverting to my old ways of ancient aliens yet. But hear me out, because several times this movie zooms out of the planet into space for no reason, and the last time we somehow see a mother penguin feather floating in the void of a vacuum. What the fuck? And what do we see is the opening shots of this fucking movie. A great penguin constellation and Happy Feet's existence is literally in the sun itself. The light, the love. Tell me I will snap. This, this movie isn't some love is the answer metaphor, it's literally the answer. Which is why we meet Loveless, who is nothing more than an extremely experienced prophet who has built a civilization around the concept of lovemaking to try and save his species. Bang up the sign, no fishing! The Great Gwyn is nothing more than the one and only God's modern form, and what I am saying is that Happy Feet is literally the second coming of Jesus Christ, the savior unappreciated for his visual and spiritual uniqueness and efforts to save humanity with love because being a human person was too risky in this day and age for both Mumble and this studio. Point blank, nothing more, period. That's what this film is about. And the extra special thanks to Mihail and Spicy Cobble.